Hi, Jeremiah. Hi, HB. Yeah, we're gonna start with a brand new air shock that we've developed called Vivid Air. So borrowing from the technologies we've developed in Vivid, but adding the air spring to it. As many of you guys have known, because you've been in the industry a long time, Rock Chocks has long been a proponent of air springs, dating back to the RS1, which had the first air spring, our first fork, going through dual air, hydra air, solo air. We've been uh, long pushing for uh, air springs in all applications. If you look at the Boxer World Cup, a lot of people said that long travel air springs were not a viable solution in downhill. We've proved that that is a viable solution, and we wanted to then extend that to the rear of the bike. So we've developed a brand new air spring technology for us called uh, Twin Tube Solo Air. So it actually doesn't ride on the air cam like most solo air systems, but it actually rides on a little inner sleeve uh, on the inside of the air can. That allows us to reduce the overall diameter of the air shock, but still uh, keep enough residual volume at bottom out so that you don't get a harsh ramp at the end. It maintains a very coil-like feel to it. Um, as we started testing with our, with our downhillers and started consulting them as to what they were looking for out of an air shock, one of the really big things for them was also having an uh, air shock that was gonna feel the same at the top of the run as it did at the bottom of the run. So that meant we had to both address the air spring issue and any type of fade that would be generated by the damper when it heated up. One of the ways we've done that is through a new technology we call Hot Rod. Hot Rod is a beginning stroke rebound adjuster that uses a piece of thermoplastic resin in the center. That piece of thermoplastic resin, when heated, will expand the adjuster rod, thus slowing down the rebound but that's tuned in conjunction with how the rebound uh, or how the oil is fading and compensate for the rebound. So basically you get close to a break even in damping performance no matter where you've heated the shock up to. So it's basically self-adjusting just depending on the temperature. That is correct. Pretty tasty. I hope so. Um, one of the other big things once we started getting out with the riders and getting their feedback they really wanted the shock to feel like a coil spring. So we tuned to have a very linear coil spring. But once we got them out on the trail, the riders kept coming back and talking to us and saying, you know what, it feels great. I love the feeling. Uh, I just, I can go faster on this thing because I can push harder. Every Coming out of the corners, I got something to move off of. And what is occurring there is the air spring actually has a speed sensitive nature to how it's compressed. So the way it absorbs energy versus a coil spring allows you to absorb the same amount of bump energy, but you use less shaft travel than you would out of a coil spring. So the riders can actually ride higher in the stroke when they're going over successive hits. This allows them to be more prepared for the next big hit when it occurs. No doubt, and for sure it has a different feel, you know. A coil spring is really, by nature, very linear. Air springs, you can play around with them. You can have them ramp up at the end. You can have them a little more plush at the beginning. Well, along with the updates we've done, to the new Vivid Air Shock, we've also done some updates to the Vivid Coil. Um, we've added a new 90 degree rebound adjuster, so it's a new placement of the rebound adjuster. What was behind that was so that we could use the hot rod in the Vivid Coil Shock as well. We've also gone to all new tunes in these shocks based upon the work we've done with Mick and some of the other riders. Um, just really making that shock the next step better than what it was prior.